Let's talk about missions. Let's walk you through what God is doing in our ministry. Journey with us to the mission fields. Allow us saturate your mind and hearts. Get up and close with our close to 2,000 missionaries serving in over 1,600 mission fields in 19 countries across the world. Let us share with you the challenges we face and the victories we've made through the power of God. Let us take you inside EMS. Hello there, welcome to another episode of Inside EMS. My name is Elizabeth Josiah and I'm glad you could join us today. But before we forge ahead, let's quickly take a musical break. We'll be right back. Master's call, go ye into the world. There's always something you can do that is precious in His eyes. We are the righteousness of Christ. Since we believe in Him, we will preach the gospel. In season and out of season, we go in faith, prayer, and action. This is the Father's heart that everyone will be saved. The love He has shown is the love we will show to. is a call on everyone of us. You can give your widow's might to support the work of the kingdom. Shine the light in everything you do. We are the righteousness of Christ. Since we believe in him, we will preach the gospel. Season and out of season, we go in faith, prayer, and action. This is the Father's heart that everyone will be saved. The love He has shown is the love we will show to the world. In every way, it's time to go, it's time to go, it's time to go, it's time to go, it's time to go in faith, prayer, and action. It's time to go, it's time to go, it's time to go, it's time to go, it's time to go in faith, prayer, and action. The master's call. Go ye into the world. There's always something you can do that is precious in his eyes. 
Welcome back from the break. You're watching Inside EMS on Equa TV International. On this episode of EMS Missionary Supporters, the church series, we'll begin with a church that started with a group of youths who engaged in Bible studies with the sole purpose of preaching Christ and now is a church. Equa Good News Bukuru began way back during the pre-independence period and has grown strong over the years. Let's go learn more about its history and the impact it has made as regards missions. I am by name Elder Ezekiel Tuck, uh, Elder in charge of missions and evangelism. And, uh, uh, concerning this church, uh, the history of Equa Good News Bukuru, uh, the, this church has a, a long history. In fact, uh, the history of this church goes, uh, uh, can be traced to the pre-independence era <coughs> in this country. And uh, when we mention pre-independence, uh, what comes to mind is the missionaries, the white men who served as missionaries. And uh, that is uh, where the root of this church can be traced. Uh, around in 1956, to be precise, uh, the church came to have to bearing this name. Uh, before then, it started as uh, a group of believers, uh, youth who were into Bible studies with the aim of uh, winning souls within Bukuru and uh, maybe uh, outside. And the uh, reason being that you know, Bukuru is, uh, is a settlement where most of the residents are you know, from different parts of the country who are, who are here for tin mining and other businesses. So this church had a membership that uh, is really divergent. And uh, uh, they started, uh, you know, with house, like fast fellowship, going from one house to the other, and uh, doing, uh, in involving themselves in studying the word of God and reaching out. Then a thought came that there is need for them to have, uh, you know, themselves formed into uh, a church structure. And it is the ASIM and missionaries that pioneered this cause. So uh, on the 15th of January, 1965, 1956, sorry, the first church service was held here in the name of Equa Good News. So EMS, it was the first English church around here. And uh, the close partner to this church is the Good News uh, uh, Church in uh, Amadou Belloway, of course. They came into existence, uh, into existence at almost the same uh, time frame. So uh, afterward, you know, we also had that after the, during the Civil War, because the members of the church were from different parts, the church had some, you know, uh, issues. So, but after the Civil War, it reconvened. And since then, uh, the church has been, you know, you know, functioning, doing that which uh, the, fa the founders of it, uh, you know, uh, left. So that is briefly uh, the, how the church, Equa Good News, Bukuru, came into existence as an English-speaking you know, uh, church uh, here in Plateau. And I think, based on what uh, we are told, like in the northern part of Nigeria. So because the white men were here in Jos, they were able to coordinate this church to be an English uh, speaking uh, church. 
So you can see that the church has a background of missions. It was founded on missions because the aim was to reach out to uh, you know, uh, people who have not uh, been saved around within Bukuru and even outside of Bukuru. So that is briefly what I can say concerning the history of Equa Good News Bukuru. Uh, based on history, the first pastor, the first uh, person to pastor this church is one Reverend Pine, a white man from Toronto in the USA. In fact, he was the pioneer pastor of this church. And uh, uh, others have come and served that I, I can only take you back to the time of uh, Reverend Gordian Okezie, uh, of blessed memory. We have had other pastors in this church. Uh, uh, Reverend Okezie, we have uh, Reverend, late Reverend uh, Ado Omar, we have uh, Reverend uh, uh, David Laje, then the present pastor, uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Dapon Yang. Uh, that is the ones that uh, have pastored the church in the recent years. Uh, I may not really have time to, uh, and uh, also uh, knowledge about the other pastors. I also can recall um, uh, Mr. Reverend um, Shishie, Reverend Tali, Reverend uh, Noel Bature, all these ones have pastored this church at one time and uh, at the other. So you can see this church has been strategic. It is a cosmopolitan, it is situated in a cosmopolitan area and uh, uh, it has also uh, been very key in uh, reaching out to, you know, uh, even forming, giving birth to so many churches. I can assure you that most of the local churches within Bukuru, Anguldi, uh, Kwata, Du, uh, they have their root from this church. So as we see this church, it has a very, very long history of uh, reaching out. So we can, uh, it can be attested to the fact that this church has given birth to so many churches and they are doing well. That's one thing. The churches that this church uh, gave birth to are doing well to the glory of God. This church, as I said from the history, has its root on missions. That was, that is the vision of those who founded this church. And that vision has been sustained since then to the moment that we are interacting now. Uh, this church, as I said, had facilitated the uh, had given birth to so many churches. And that is an indication that it is uh, a mission-oriented church. And uh, you know, Equa itself is mission. So you can't separate uh, Equa from missions and missions from Equa. So actually this church has been in that vision and we have been sustaining that vision. Uh, we have been supporting mission, missionaries for long, and in particular, the EMS uh, missionaries, EMS of Equa. Uh, for now, uh, when I joined this church, we've been supporting two missionaries as a church. And uh, the church has been uh, making a lot of effort in that direction to see that we keep to that. So we support two missionaries. Uh, one of them is currently in uh, Das DCC, Reverend uh, Hassan Hausa. And there is one in Zagun DCC, uh, 
uh, Johanna Yerima. Yes, these are the two that we have been supporting uh, with them, yeah, EMS missionaries. So uh, uh, really what prompted us to do that, as I said, it is in line with the vision of the founding fathers of this church, that we support the work of God. You know, any church that supports mission is having the interest of uh, the kingdom of God at heart and is doing what God said we should do. So uh, that has been our driving force. We are doing what our master said we should do. He gave us that mandate and we have no other mandate than to do it. Whether in things or in things, we have to do that which our master have you know, uh, instructed us to do. So do missions is not anything we should negotiate as believers. It's non-negotiable, it's something we have to do. Uh, whether it is suitable or not suitable, whether in favorable conditions or unfavorable conditions, we have to do it. And uh, apart from the two missionaries uh, that the local church uh, sponsors a missionary, so you can see the effort, another effort came together and they are supporting mission up to date. Uh, they are called uh, the Daughters of Zion. Four missionaries have been supported at this church. One, uh, two from the, by the Mother Church and uh, one from the Women Fellowship and the other one from uh, who are in the field are supported. So uh, this are the mission, number of missionaries that uh, uh, we say this church is supporting. And uh, there are other mission activities that we are uh, engaged in. Uh, we, as a local church, have made it uh, a priority to visit uh, the less privileged, uh, the mission that are into mission activities. Uh, we have uh, Gidambege, which is another um, equa ministry. We visit them. Uh, we have visited them severally. And uh, we also have uh, um, the EMS Children's School. I think we visited them this year. And uh, we have uh, the City Ministry of Equa, the Youth Arm, which is in Lamingo now. We also have been visiting them. When they were around uh, that uh, Zaria Road, we have visited them. There's this one after behind um, Plateau Riders. We have visited them. So, you know, this church, we are focused on reaching out to those areas that need, you know, the help. And it's part of mission. It's part of mission. So, we have been doing it because we feel as to reach out to them. It is a part of outreach, and reaching out is mission. So uh, uh, that's to the glory of God. We have made it, and we have been doing it, and we continue to do it to the glory of God. And uh, apart from that, uh, the DCC, in its wisdom, has identified weaker churches, uh, mission stations within the DCC and uh, churches that are stronger, you know, uh, are supporting them. And to the glory of God, this church, we are supporting the salaries of two of those churches, uh, mission stations in this uh, LCC. So that's an area, another area that this church is extending mission support. So, uh, uh, these are some of the ways, apart from the four missionaries, that this church is involved in uh, missions and outreaches. There are strategies that we as a local church uh, have adopted. Uh, you know, for 
we we have adopted no regular mobilization of members. Our members are regularly informed of the needs that are on ground. So when members are aware of a need, that will trigger our uh, response. So uh, whenever we are having uh, you know, programs that are that, uh, mission related, we ensure that our members are adequately informed. And uh, uh, we also have been using the pulpit to encourage members. I want to assure you that our pastors are doing well. Anything that has to do with missions, they don't hesitate to sound it from the pulpit. And uh, that is a very good uh, way of approaching uh, members to give support uh, that is required uh, uh, for missions. Then uh, we also make sure that individual members are encouraged. Yes, individual members. We have, you know, link with members that are supporting missions. And we get uh, we track their activities, we encourage them, we send uh, encouragement to them, appreciation to them. You know, you know, when someone does something and you call him and you appreciate his effort, that gingers him. So we have really been doing that to ensure that our members who give support to missions are given that recognition. And, uh, that encourages them. So uh, the part of awareness, you know, we do that. Our members are very much aware of the activities of missions. And from time to time, we remind them and encourage them. And I think that is where uh, we have been getting it. Uh, to the glory of God. And uh, for the challenges, uh, yeah, we, there's nothing we will do without having challenges. Uh, uh, yeah, for challenges, you know, it's not everyone that the response is good, though some are not really uh, uh, doing well uh, because certainly uh, we have different we have the notion that ah, we are in different difficult economy uh, economic situation so uh, some people may feel ah I have problem in my family uh, so th that also leads to you know it also affects support for missions so actually the economy is affecting some of our members, though that is not a yardstick. We always sound it to them that whether you have it or not, make sure you do missions. It's not just giving. There are other ways of supporting missions. We have, we have uh, prayer, uh, we have visitation. I forgot to tell you that one of the things we do is we visit our missionaries. Yes, uh, the missionaries that uh, talk to you, we visit them. Sometimes we go out on outreach to their stations. We carry out mis medical services, uh, uh, preaching engagement uh, in those uh, areas. So uh, we have had that. And, uh, for the challenges, that is just what we said. Some members respond slowly to uh, is an area that we have been working on to see that we carry all the members of this church along. Uh, really, this is a challenge. Uh, the challenge that just a few churches are 
trying. That means you uh, have the notion that uh, supporting missions, you have to uh, get uh, half a lot of money. It's not like that. It's not like that. Uh, the, this, the current uh, modality adopted by EMS to raise support, which is uh, through the golden support, it has, uh, so they are encouraging members to give less than, and uh, not less than 5,000 naira. But I tell you, if every member of EQUA will just give 100 naira in a month, 100 naira in a month, uh, uh, by the end of the month, if, for instance, a church has uh, 100 members, that is about uh, 10,000 naira in a local church. Then when you multiply that by 12, that's 120,000 naira in a year. Just 100 naira. You must not set a target that is high that will discourage people. So local churches, I think, they have to go down back to see that they adopt you know, measures that uh, we consider as negligible. It is this negligible, uh, it is these small, small things that will add up to, to form bigger you know, things. So let no church feel that supporting missions require you know, very huge uh, commitment. No. I think that is where most of the churches are getting it wrong. Are getting it wrong. So I want to call on other churches that are not supporting missions to go back and encourage members to begin to make little, little contributions. I'm aware of some that contribute just less than 500 naira in a, in a year. At least they have done something. If every member will do that, some of the challenges that EMS is having today who would be uh, a thing of the past. So uh, the EMS itself should work mo at modalities to reach out to these churches to find out and then give them encouragement. Let them not run away from supporting missions that they need to have, you know, a very, they need to mobilize a huge support. Let them start from little, little support. And you'll be surprised to see what will come out from these churches that are considered not to be supporting mission. Something will come out of there. And uh, you remember in the Bible, uh, Jesus Christ stood in the synagogue as people came to give. Uh, this poor widow came with just two uh, pennies and Jesus acknowledged that she has given you know, more than the others. So the little that you feel is negligible to God, is, it will go a long way in uh, you know, uh, advancing the kingdom. If this one brings his two, this one brings uh, uh, one, it lumps up into something significant. So I think we need to go down to that level, to encourage our members. In this church, as I told you, it's not everyone that is involved in mission. I am aware, I know, I have the records of people that give in this church. As at the time I became the mission speaker, we have records. We have records of the golden support, the, 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 the commitment of every member, the effort that each one has made. We have the records. And some are done well, some are doing well, some are yet to begin. So all of this, you cannot have a perfect situation, but something must what, begin from somewhere. So these churches should come up and begin to make uh, you know, efforts in that regard. No one will query them for say, oh, you brought just little amount. God needs that little that you think is little. It's not little before God. So I want to call on other churches around, Bukuru DCC, and Equa in general. It's the work of our father. 
We cannot abandon our father's work. So it has to be done. It's a, it's a mandate that has been given to us. Jesus didn't say you must have this huge amount to support me. Do it. Give that little that you have and it will go far. It will reach being you know, actively involved in supporting missions. Ecuador didn't just included, include a mission elder to fill in its constitution. It did it for a purpose. And the purpose is to carry on the vision of the founding fathers of Equa. So as a local church, the mission elder is overseeing this area that has to do with the vision of Equa. So not having somebody there means not having someone to take care of that vision. Then what are you doing? You cannot do without a financial secretary without treasurer. Uh -uh. Then the mission should be above those ones. Because why are you gathering the money for? Eh? The treasurer is keeping the money for what? So you are only keeping it for yourself as a church, not seeing what is happening in the mission field. I think those churches should uh, reconsider their stance and ensure that they put in place a mission elder. Uh, here, it's not just the mission elder, there's a mission committee. A, a committee. Yes, the elder is there as a chairman, but there's a committee. We meet, we strategize, we look at all of these things. That's why, uh, to the glory of God, we are able to achieve what uh, we, have, uh, we have today. Uh, as the missions and evangelism elder, uh, I don't just know how to appreciate the members of this church, how to begin, because a lot of them are doing wonderful. Uh, for, let me just give you an instance. In the Golden Support, the Equa said, AMS is, request is uh, asking for a minimum of 5,000. But I tell you, members of this church, some have given over 70,000 naira, an individual. If someone, if a benchmark of 55,000 naira is given, and someone is giving that amount, it means he has really understood what it means to do missions. I'm just giving you one instance. A lot of them have given far, far more than the 5,000. So it really encourages the leaders. It makes us to feel that the messages being passed on the pulpit are really getting to the hearts of members. So I want to appreciate your members, uh, particularly for uh, their efforts in supporting missions. And uh, uh, we have been doing it, we have been appreciating them. As I said from the beginning, we have been appreciating them. I think uh, about two weeks back, uh, I stood before them and I gave them uh, uh, a report of our efforts so far this year. And I gave encouragement to those that are uh, uh, in the process. Uh, those that have not really keyed in, as I mentioned, there are some that have not really come out to, to uh, be part of the mobilization of support uh, for missions. So we use that opportunity to encourage them. But however, my heart goes to those that are really in the, the whole scheme of supporting uh, missions. Uh, I told them that day that if you do God's work, God will do your own. If you take God's work serious, God will take your own more serious. So I think uh, our members, not only I, let, I even wish that EMS itself should give uh, appreciation to this church, especially the members that are uh, supporting missions. And uh, uh, it makes us to feel, yes, we are done doing it. And uh, we are not doing it to the missions, they are not doing it to the pastor, they are not doing it to 
to EMS. They are doing it to our master who gave us the mandate to do it. So I really appreciate God for their lives, the lives of the members of this church that are supporting us. It's quite interesting to learn more about the history of this church and how it has made headway in engaging itself in missions. We'll quickly take a break now. Stay with us. From the first missionary couple sent by EMS to Senyawa in Kanu in the year 1949 to the 1,970 missionary couples currently serving in the 19 countries of the world, the goal has been to preach the gospel of salvation to the ends of the earth. EMS. <laughs> Can the taffy and the etchy? Yes, you are cheap with a pitch can do near Duca. Labata de Lavari. Coaji. The church is existing simply because God Himself has a mission. As such, the mission of God has become the mission of the church. Our founding fathers trusted God and used every resource at their disposal for missions work. We cannot be different. If you look at in the game of, of missions, there is no spectator. All of us as believers are active players. There's no sitting on the fence. Just like one of the songs that says, if you cannot go, you can send someone. You, your money can go. From 2011 to 2020, EMS has recorded an enormous progress in the last 10 years. People witnessed to 3,501,452. New converts, 170,290. Rededication, 196,956. People in literacy class, 80,746. People in discipleship class, 101,236. People in baptismal class, 83,694. People baptized, 25,189. New stations, 5,588. Stations wind. 539. There is actually no better time to preach the gospel than now. When you have a time like we do right now, that the hearts of men are failing them for the insecurity we have, the poverty that sweeps our entire country and the continent, and all the evils that surround us, this is the best time to preach the gospel because when men are in despair, that is when they want to listen to a God of hope. The despair and hopelessness in our nation presents the biggest opportunity of reaching out to a dying world without Christ. Welcome back from the break. A few weeks ago, the EMS Children's School had an interesting activity that got the students involved in practical steps in broadcasting. We had hours of rehearsals and I think they did great. Let's take a look. Good morning. You are welcome to the news at 10 on ECSG Television Network. I am Dorcas Martin. And I am Emmanuel Luca. Here are the headlines. EMA Children's School Joss, the place to be. An adventurous first time and new event on campus. Inauguration of new prefer for the academic session. The most exciting midterm break ever. Sport will just. Now the news in full. In responding to the need for education for the children of EMS missionaries who serve in rural communities with no access to schools, the EMS Children's School Church was established in April 1992 station in remote areas that have no access to schools to provide a Christ Center curriculum for missionary children, especially for missionaries in difficult Muslim-dominated areas. 
to provide some quality form of education to children of missionaries that died during active mission service. To provide an education that gives room for deep spiritual development and social relevance for missionary children. Since then, the school as one of the 40 academic institutions of EMS of Equa has put smiles on the faces of its students and their parents. It is a Christian co-educational primary and secondary school under one leadership with a 24-hour boarding school program for children ages 6 to 18 years. The school currently has 10 classes with 358 students from over 200 communities and a vibrant team of 70 staff drawn from various states of the country. Its vision is to prepare pupils as, as future leaders who are morally equipped, academically sound and spiritually matured, and competent to reach the or reach for Christ and serve the nation, nations as diaspora faithfully. While its mission is to provide a Christ-centered academic community that equip all EMS children, it seeks to train them to equally think biblically, live wisely, and serve humanity faithfully. The motto of the school is equipped to excel in line with its commitment to train its students as ambassador of the gospel. Our correspondent has more on this. Following the story at this hour, I am with the proprietor of EMS Children's School, Joss, in the person of EMS Director, Reverend Mark Phillips. Most missionaries' funding is very low, and then also we needed to relieve that pain and burden of them um, going to other schools that charge very expensive. And we wanted them to have also their children for discipleship and mentoring. And so that gave birth to EMS Children's School. We felt like we can control how much they pay. We can equally help them and bring other resources to put together to really take care of them. We do not want missionaries to be in the school, I mean in the mission field, and then the children are either out of school or they are not able to go to school because of money. So that brought the idea of the children, EMS Children's School. Believe me, this is my dream personally for the next three years. I want it to be a state-of-the-art school. I want it to compete with any school in the city. And I believe that if anyone deserves quality education, our children, children of missionaries should deserve quality education for many reasons why. These are the guys that stake their lives on the line. I know that many of them have not even had the privilege of attending school schools. And also they have made extensive sacrifices to do so. And then equally, second and third is that most of them retire and they don't have, their children are helpless and they are also helpless. So what we want to do, we want to have functional, qualitative education that is competitive and that our children can stand anywhere in the world and defend their learning and become, contribute to the society and becomes very meaningful. I'm looking for hostels that I will want to take my child and anyone else can take those children in. And, and also want them to feed well. What kind of feeding we have right now is not satisfactory to me. I also want you to walk into that school and think you are in heaven, in a heaven where the environment is beautiful, is cozy and all of that. I think we can achieve that. And it will also bring, make the mission feel go well because if you just know that. And then again, you know that most children hit the, the work of missionaries because you grow up in a family where there is no food and the parents are not paid well and missionary parents I mean children grow up to be bitter we want to turn that around by the grace of God we want full just is indeed the place to be back to Dockers and Emmanuel I am lovely Marcus reporting for ECSJ television network welcome back following the arrival on new principal in the person of teachers, want a blessing bonus and a certain first time in the 2022 and 2023 academic year, as various events, both academic and extracurricular, has left both teachers and students in a state of continual joy and learning moment. To equip a prefect for leadership, the school management took it that a prefect on a prefect leadership retreat on Saturday, the 15th of October, 2022. 
The prefect were trained on effective leadership for the 21st century prefect, making a difference through leadership, effective communication, and, in, and its importance in a team and conflict re resolution on, and how the prefect would be able to navigate conflict while in leadership. There was also in-depth discussion about the job description of each post in the prefecture, a congress and a charge to the prefect to lead the student body of the school committee in line with the core values, vision, and mandate of the school. The prefect are also hosted to lunch and enjoy a hike at the retreat center. After the retreat, the school held a prefect installation and inauguration service on Friday, the 21st of October. The 2022 prefect were presented to the principal by the school registrar, Mrs. S. Mrs. Esther Jerome Olu. After which the prefect signed their contract and were inaugurated by the various departments of the school. Lastly, the prefect represented by the head boy, Shedrach Joshephat, gave an acceptance speech and they all said the ECH prefect pledge. We wish them a successful tenure and look forward to seeing the amazing work they will do. Take a look at the highlight from the retreat. Being given the title of the of School Prefect is an honor and a privilege, and we hope that we will look back on your time in this role with a sense of pride, particularly in the future years when you move on from the Children's School to university and beyond. There are many, many things that made a difference to me today, but I would like to share a few. And some of these things were the qualities of a good leadership. That's you, a good leader must be humble. A prophet or a leader must show his characteristics in which it's important for him to play all his role to play. And a leader must be a model in which other people or followers will see and follow the footsteps of a leader. One cannot pass out communication without talking or writing or doing any other thing. You cannot sit down thinking that one knows what is in your mind, but rather you have to say it aloud or write it or send a message through the phones and, and electronic devices to show that you are communicating. So ideally, communication is very good and it is very special for us, especially for us as a student. I was privileged to talk about conflict resolution understood that conflicts are bound to be found when one or two more persons are in a place. And talk less of a big school like ours, a school of over 300 getting to 400 students. Um, bringing the children to Rija is very important. We're teaching them leadership skills. Um, quite unfortunately, but most Christians are not really into politics. Now we want to reshape the minds of these young people teach them that they can be in politics and still be godly. So we're teaching them. This um, retreat is to open their minds to leadership, biblical leadership, how they can learn it from a younger age to become people of relevance in the society. So why we brought them to this retreat is so that we empower them with the necessary skills and the tools that they need to be able to carry out their one-year tenure at the school as prefect, to be able to drive change because we need them to be able to make a difference. And we have a large population of, of students. We have uh, close to 400. And we believe that if they are able to do their work well, the student body will be able to be managed well and will have an organized school and the school will go to the places we need it to go to. So for you to carry out your duty very well, as a team, In a quest to ensure that all members of the school community 
become global citizens and relevant in the 21st century. The school adheres to the observ observance of both national and international celebrations. This celebration, like the World Teachers Day, International Day of the Girl Child, United Nations Day, Independence and Democracy Day, World Children's Day and International Student Day are used as learning moments to create awareness on what happens outside the ECSJ school communities. The school also observes Career Week, Environmental Healthy Health and Safety Week, Cultural Day, and a host of others. More report on this from our studios. Stay with us. To mark the International Day of a Girl Child on the 11th of October, we receive guests from Community Outreach for Educational Change, COEP, who came to share with us the importance of a girl child and why she deserves to be celebrated, especially in the northern Nigeria. There were two guest speakers who talk about harnessing the power and potential in the girl child and girls breaking the bias in pursuit of careers they deem fit for themselves. It means a lot that the school has started to, se to educate the school community on the challenges that accompany being a girl child. This conversation were in line with this year's theme for the uh, celebration, which says, our time is now, our right, our future. Of course, our here refer refers to girls all over the world, and we affirm this in agreement with them. Our learners, especially the girls, were most excited because they had never heard about such a day and they were delighted to be celebrated. We hope that the school will keep holding this conversation until there is a world view shift regarding the place of a girl child in the society. We are grateful to Koyek and all the speakers for the visit. I am Salamu Buba, reporting for ECSJ Television Network. To mark the week-long midterm break this term, EMS Children's School just collaborated with the pastor of Echo Seminary Junior Church, Feringada, to hold a vacation Bible school for the learners. The theme was Make Waves, What You Do Today Can Change the World Around You. And the week was packed with so many fun activities that helped the learners focus on five topics spread across four days. All daily activities were tailored towards emphasizing the topic of the day. The subtopics, wave maker, catch the wave, lifesaver, make a splash and ripple effects are all interconnected and taught through Bible lessons. The mission center, the music center, the health center, the science center and the game center. All classes were organized according to ages with teachers coordinating them. The music center was everybody's favorite center because it was entertaining and everyone who never got to participate in anything in, in anything in the other centers got to dance and sing. Some of the titles of the songs that were played were are Making Waves, Love Like You, Make a Move, Love One Another and so on. The songs were am amazing and Making Waves seems to be the student's favorite. When the week came to an end, the students began to miss the lessons and the teachers and wished that the VBS never came to an end. We are grateful to Pastor Isaac Anger and his team of resilient volunteers for taking the time to do this with us. We are also grateful to Community Outreach for Education, for Educational Change, COEC, for funding it and to Equal Youth Camp Alive for their support. We look forward to next time. Ruya Tauma reporting. Glad to have you back. The school community has been filled with excitement and gratitude throughout this term as it has received so many visitors who come with word of encouragement and many donations. Families, individual, church agency, school chapters, churches and Sunday school groups have all shown us tremendous support. We have received many food items, toiletries, clothes, slippers, and also cash gift. But to crown it all, the Equal Women Fellowship International, represented by the international leader, Mrs. Miriam Phillips, visited the school on the 11th of November with super amazing gifts for our kitchen. 
The school was gifted food flags, plates, cups, spoons, forks, and serving spoons to make mealtime healthy and orderly. To express appreciation for all the visits and donations, the principal of the school, teacher Swanta Blessing Bonat, stated that our sincere gratitude goes to all our donors and supporters for their truthfulness. The visit, the word of encouragement, prayers and gifts, prayers and gifts. This has done a lot in helping us to take care of the children in our care this term. We are presenting these items to you by the Equa Women Fellowship International so that it will alleviate some of the little things you learn in the kitchen. I pray that it will go a long way to encourage you. The Lord bless you. Amen. We are presenting it in the name of God the Father, Amen. the Son, Amen. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. say that we have great minds and potential leaders here. It goes a long way to affirm that the children of our missionaries at EMS get quality education. We've come to the end of today's episode. Thank you for watching. But before I go, I'd like to remind you that we're open to featuring your church on this special edition if your local church is a supporter of EMS missionaries. You can contact us through the number displayed on the screen. Remember to catch up on previous episodes on our YouTube channel at EMS of Equa. Subscribe and share with your loved ones. Have a blessed week ahead.